You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by talking about, uh, I'm going to read a letter. And this is, this is an international podcast from the standpoint of the source comes from the United Kingdom. Got of a uh, viewer slash listener in the United Kingdom. I, I re- corresponded back and forth with him. I'm going to share his catalytic converter experience. Not a positive one. He's got some great input coming from that part of the world that I think is super interesting. We're going to read about that. And then we got a couple articles here. All right, let's go. Uh, so dear Sean, and this is anonymous, of course, if you send me any email, I will never read your name unless you're dying to have me read your name on the uh, the podcast. I don't think most of you are most of you are adults. And you're like, yeah, I don't really need that kind of infamy if it is, because some of the stuff I talk about here, uh, it's not exactly what everybody would say. Oh, yeah, that's politically correct. It's not catalytic converters. Everybody's got one on their car. It's a go topic. Sean, dear Sean, I'm a big fan of your show, but I actually live in the UK. Please blame the YouTube algorithm, which I will gladly do because thank you for being part of the show. With regards to catalytic converter theft, we have an epidemic here, particularly around London and the South. I had my catalytic converter stolen about 18 months ago. The thieves mainly target hybrids as they have better converters and because they spend a lot of time on the electricity power. The metals are less degraded and therefore more valuable. A skilled team can get the converter off in under two minutes and get a thousand pounds for them. I just did the conversion, $1,380. $1,380 bucks for sawing off your catalytic converter in under two minutes. Damn, I am in the wrong business, right? And that's because of the epidemic. I had to wait six weeks for a converter as it caused a shortage in the whole of Europe. There's there's a shortage of catalytic converters. This is crazy. My car was a Toyota Auris. Is that a, is that the European version? I don't know what that is. It's a Toyota, right? Because you go to Australia and it's like, ah, you got the Chevy, whatever. And it's like, oh, but that's a Chevy. Ah, it's not the same name, but it's the same car. Certain models of Toyotas are very vulnerable and therefore highly prized. The police were completely uninterested. They tend to target hospital car parks and long stay car parks. And those are parking lots for those of you who don't know how to convert that. All I received was a lousy phone call. That sounds like Seattle or Portland. Welcome to the show. The worst part is the criminals steal from an area. This is, this is the good part. They steal from an area, wait six months for the insurance to replace them, and then come back again and repeat the cycle. It's a bit like harvesting crops. That is, you're, you're, har- you're literally harvesting catalytic converters. I sold my car and bought a tank of a petrol BMW, a gas BMW, right? But others are not able to change cars. It is completely underreported. Toyota had sent out a warning regarding the model of my car about three months before the shady dealer sold it to me. That shady dealer. We should call that shady dealer out, shouldn't we? Yeah, he'll get what he has coming to him. Maybe car dealers. They're always, they're always shady, aren't they? Please. Well, not all of them, but eh, this one seems like it was. Please warn your viewers that if it has been stolen once, they will be back and to also research any new purchases as this crime is going to increase. So I started thinking about my friends buying like four by four rigs and stuff, because we're going to get into why that is an issue. Got a young lady I know um, that's getting the new uh, Ford Bronco. Cool rig. I mean, just they're bringing out the Ford Bronco again. It, it, It looks amazing. Should get one. And yet I'm worried about my catalytic converter being stolen. I don't know. Uh, can you can we really stop this epidemic? No, but I think there's some things we can do. And we're going to talk about that too. The automotive companies are keen to bury bury this story. I mean, he has a BBC news link. I checked that out. And we're going to cover some more of these uh, topics as well. And so after responding, we kind of emailed back and forth. Please feel free to share my comments anonymously. I think it's important to warn people as this crime will affect a lot of middle class folk and cause parts shortage, parts shortage, rise in insurance, and a lot of misery. Imagine going out to your car. Why does my car sound like this? What is going on? Well, if you're a listener slash viewer of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast, you will immediately know, darn it, got the best of me. It is very model and make dependent, and some of the newer models are safer. You can buy a cat lock, 
which is a cage that is bolted around the converter. This is often done with commercial vehicles, but the ones for cars are useless, increasing the time removal from two to five minutes. 1380 bucks for five minutes of work. I'm still in the wrong business, right? A team of organized criminals will go through a car park and get several converters again from various models. I work in a hospital and our car park has been hit about five times. It's just starting over the if it's just starting over there, then prepare for more. I don't think it's just starting over here. I think it's just hitting some of the major media. I think that's kind of the case. I think it's along the lines of it's an international thing because it's the price of these precious metals. All right. So let's uh, so thank you. You know who you are who sent this to me. Thank you so much for that input. Pretty cool from the UK. As precious metals prices soar, so do catalytic converter thefts. This is from marketplace.org. Jean Bentley is a retired nurse from St. Paul, Minnesota, who back in January picked up a shift at a nearby clinic that was short staffed for the day. When her shift was over a little after 5 p.m., she walked out to her parking lot to start her car. How do you think this is going to go? Not well. And it was just that brum, 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 she said, like you don't have a muffler. Bentley knew immediately what that noise meant. She had friends and neighbors who had also had catalytic converters sawed off their cars. She had insurance to get it fixed, but her deductible was a thousand bucks. So I just had to bite it. You got to get it fixed, but it's a shame, you know, when you're trying to work extra shifts and help out when you're paying extra money instead of saving, she said. So she went backwards on that shift. But, you know, if it wasn't then, it was probably another time. So... So this guy here that I just read that letter from hospital, this gal here, hospital trend, right? Then go through a whole bunch of cars that way. So thieves have been stealing more and more catalytic converters across the country over the past year from St. Paul to Los Angeles to Dallas, as the value of the precious metals, they contain skyrockets. So that's the thing. This is an international deal. According to the National Insurance Crime Bureau in 2019, on average, 282 thefts were reported each month. Last year, that number jumped to about 1200 per month. So it's been around for a while. And I've heard about this for probably a couple of years now. The first time I really heard about it was Dave 2D. He's a YouTuber that's in hot water because he does van roasts. And um, I was going to do maybe a podcast on this, but I think I'll just share it right now. He does van roasts. He, he, he does roast videos of van uh, people living in vans who do van life. They're usually cute couples, younger, the chick is hot, and they focus on that and how perfect their lifestyles are living in a van. But Dave lives in a van. Dave 2D lives in a van. And he knows that it's difficult. And at one point in time, he was living in a van and he had his catalytic converter cut off. And he literally woke up to somebody cutting off his catalytic converter. And those are the streets of LA. But the reason Dave 2D is in uh, hot water is because he did a van roast of a gal who had some mental health issues, a famous uh, Max and Lee. Uh, they are van lifers. They were van lifers. And uh, they had a channel together and they broke up. And uh, Dave 2D did a roast that was probably pretty upsetting for the young lady, Lee, and she threw herself in front of a train and killed herself. And that was about three weeks ago, I think. Super sad story. Just brutal. Brutal. Um, yeah, YouTube, right? I mean, it's a crazy world. So um, yeah, that's the first time I heard about the whole catalytic converter thing was Dave 2D did a, a video saying, oh, I got my catalytic converter. Uh, stolen. And I'm like, what? what is that? And that may have been uh, maybe it's a couple of years ago. Catalytic converters contain trace amounts of precious metals, including platinum, palladium and rhodium, which in early March hit nearly $30,000 per ounce. The problem is that they're just worth so much, said Paul Duenhauer, a chemical engineering and materials science professor at the University of Minnesota. We think of platinum as more valuable than gold, but rhodium is 10 times more valuable than platinum. So in the end, even if there's just a small amount of metal in a catalytic converter, it's just worth so much per ounce. So I think you will see more and more on this topic. Why are we reading about this on a real estate podcast channel? Well, because people who live in homes, oftentimes in the suburbs have cars. And maybe that's you. Maybe you've got a car. I've got a couple. Do I have a couple right now? I have at least two. 
two. Yep. When you have kids and you buy a car for a kid and you got that car floating around and it just basically becomes a bumper car, you kind of forget that that's your car, but that is your car. But I haven't had that situation for a while. I signed over the last car to my youngest, I don't know, maybe a, th a few years ago. Three, I can't remember, two years ago. Catalytic converters are muffler-shaped devices installed on the undersides of vehicles. When cars and trucks burn gas, the exhaust has harmful contaminants, contaminants in it, including nitrogen oxide, which is stuff that causes acid rain. Catalytic converters break down those compounds before they're released into the air. And we need that to happen really fast because you can imagine if the gases leave the engine very fast and come out of the exhaust pipe, um, it's not a good thing. So we have to have highly active metals to promote those chemical reactions. And they're in the cat. You're in the catalytic converter. And the best metals to do that are platinum group metals, which also include palladium and rhodium. I don't know if I'd ever heard of rhodium before this news story. Um, as the prices of those metals have soared, catalytic converter thefts have spread across the country, even to Rolla, M Missouri, where Moats lives. It's about 100 miles outside of St. Louis. It's everywhere, Moat said. Recently, the catalytic converters were stolen off our church vans. Again, I talk about vandalism to churches. I talk about don't break the church windows. That's got to be a huge no-no. Whether you believe or not, don't do it. I just don't think it's a good call, right? I mean, let's be reasonable. Even if you um, you know, don't believe at all, I kind of think you give a hall pass to the church and you move on to whatever the next business is. I don't want to see any businesses get broken into, but that's, that's just kind of one of my rules. Church, ah, let that go. Along with the Boys and Girls Club. Boys and Girls Club that got broken into in Portland. That's horrible. Thieves can either slide under cars and saw them off and just, uh, can, thieves can slither under cars and slide them off in just a couple of minutes. Makes them sound like snakes, doesn't it? Are you doing some slithering under there? Are you going to take off that person's cat? And yes, I am. We'd frequently see reports where an officer would pull over a vehicle for a traffic violation and one thing would lead to another and they'd find a trunk full of catalytic converters and a sawzall and jacks and things like that, said St. Paul police spokesperson Steve Linders. He said reports of thefts have tripled in the first two months of 2021 compared to the same period last year. Unless we catch them in the act, there's not a lot they can do. One of the ways I saw, one of the explanations I said, I, I read that was, how you uh, reduce this is to uh, inscribe your VIN, your serial number of your car or your VIN number of your car onto your catalytic converter, and then also weld the the mounting bolts of it shut. All right, and you need to replace that cat. I am guessing that requires a blowtorch to get that bad boy off. So I'm not sure if that's a reasonable explanation, and if a um, thief grabs your cat, aren't they just going to, you know, take one of those grinders and just take that serial number off? Probably. So I don't think doing that either going to help much. So there's no way to trace a catalytic converter back to the car it was stolen from. Uh, Linder said a single catalytic converter can fetch up to 300 bucks at a scrapyard here. Well, we know it it fetches far more in the UK, right? Lawmakers in 18 states, including Minnesota, have proposed legislation to restrict the sale of catalytic converters. It's kind of like the restricting the sale of, what was it? Um, antihistamine, I think, that they make meth out of. My, my illegal drugs or that whole thing is pretty minimal. It's one of those things that you buy at the drugstore. All of a sudden, you had to be, you know, 45 years old and look like you are mostly sober to get that medicine because so many people were making meth out of it. I think it was meth. It's kind of like that. Do you have a permit to buy your catalytic converter? No. Okay, you need one. Here's where you go. Are we going to do something like that? I don't know. This is just kind of one of those things where until that price of that metal goes down, watch your cat. Watch your cat. In the meantime, a lot of car owners, including Gene Bentley, are taking matters into their own hands and having specialized locks installed under their cars to deter thieves. Bentley said hers cost a 250 bucks on top of the $1,000 deductible to get it replaced. It's just a lot of extra money, she said. Yeah, what a hassle. You go out to your car. What the heck is going on? You know, when you start your car up, it just sounds like a, a teenager's drag race car because they cut off the muffler, right? 
All right, so here's the last one I'm going to read. This is also on the catalytic converter. Don't worry. Catalytic converter stolen for precious metals. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down to here is how to reduce the risk. That's kind of what we care about, right? What can you do? Well, if your car is parked outside, not a lot you can do. You could install a camera, a security camera. Those are kind of some of the things that I think of. But then I'm just looking and I'm annoyed because I'm looking at footage of the guys who came by. Guess what? The police probably aren't going to catch them. Hard to read license plate off of those. Uh, we have we have wise cameras. Um, I have wise cameras here in the office just because you never know when somebody's going to take offense to something that you say on a podcast. And so we've got cameras, cameras at home, um, cameras on my boat. Uh, just you, you can never be too safe. So what are the things that you can uh, do to reduce the risk of theft, theft of your cat and not your kitty? Garage your car whenever possible, all right? Unless it's in a hospital parking lot, hospital garage. That sounds like uh, those are sought after. Park in a well-lit, busy area. Okay, but if it's overnight, you know, so many of those places, they're just, you know, hospitals. People get sick in the middle of the night. Those are open 24 hours, right? So that's not really an option. So I mean, it'd be nice to be able to do that. Look out for people working under cars. Hey, what are you doing under there? Never mind. Okay. 911. If the car is high risk, consider marking the, me the metal shell of the converter with a unique mark so that if it's removed by thieves, it will be easier to trace back to your vehicle. Good luck with that one, because by the time you figure out that it is gone, that thing is probably at a fence somewhere and halfway through the process of being met melted down. Because like we said earlier, you don't want to be caught with a whole, you know, bag of catalytic converters in the back of your car in your trunk. What do you got there? Nothing. I ain't just... You know, I'm a catalytic converter specialist, and I got to have lots of them for all the people. Why are they all sawed off with that sawzall you got in there? Ah, you know, it's, I'm just a hands-on guy. It's what we do. If you operate a small fleet, consider obstructing access to vehicles with high ground clearance by parking lower vehicles close by. That's an interesting one that I had not heard of, which makes sense. But what a pain in the rear. Hey, I'm a big guy. I can't get out of my car because I've got other smaller vehicles parked too close to my rig. That's a very big consideration when you are bigger versus smaller. So what can what can we really do? Not much. Just be aware of when you're parking your car somewhere. So So there's really not a lot we can do. And that's what I think that is what makes this crime. Um, so so prevalent right now. I'm also read, uh, reading, um, going back to the comment about the Ford Bronco, taller vehicles, four by fours are particularly vulnerable as the converters are more accessible. I, I've always had a four by four rig, uh, just always do. And I'm always like, uh, except my, I think my 92 Ford F350 crew cab. I don't even know if it has a catalytic converter because it's so old. Does it? Somebody hit me up with mechanic on that. I don't know. Nor, nor do I even really know what, what one looks like. I know they're metal and they fit under there and they look like kind of a mini muffler, but they're in between the exhaust and the muffler component-ish. Man, my mechanics are bad, but I have been watching a lot of Vice Grip Garage. If you haven't watched that, that guy has a lot of followers on YouTube. And what he does is he's a, he's, he's a mechanic and he goes out to these cars and he has these little kind of these narratives and he goes out to these cars that have been parked for 10, 15, 20, 25 years and he gets them going. He like opens up the door and he's got these funny comments about, oh my gosh, this smells so terrible. And yeah, I'm going to try and, and oftentimes he'll, in order to get a starter to go, he'll literally just take a hammer and start beating on it. You know, he's a backyard mechanic, but he's really good. And I think he does dr drag races or burnout contests my mechanic uh, mechanics are minimal. So that's why I'm probably butchering the whole catalytic converter thing here. Um, but I watch a lot of vice grip garage and he doesn't seem to be worried about catalytic converters because he works on a lot of old cars. 
that probably just don't have them. If they have them, they're all rusted out or whatever. I think it's a newer thing, right? Um, so what can you do? Uh, not a lot. Be aware. And if you get in your car, you crank it up, and it doesn't sound right, sounds like you got no muffler, probably your catalytic converter. So I will be covering this story, even though it's kind of a it's a lesser, I mean, we're not complaining about the homelessness situation. We're not complaining about, um, you know, the peaceful protests going sideways. But this is one of those news stories that's out there. And I do hear people talking about it. And I've had a lot of comments since I released the first podcast. People are like, hey, really appreciate you doing that catalytic converter one because I've heard that story too. And my brother-in-law's uncle's uh, babysitter of their kid um, yeah, they got their catalytic converter stolen also. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah, I'm trying to put as much information out there to people on these important issues. Because when you get in your car, and you hear that brum, 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 brum sound, it's going to be an important issue to you too. So I'm sorry if that's happened to you or if it's going to happen to you in the future. That sucks. Let me know in the comments. All right. That's it for me on this one. Catalytic converters. It's a thing being stolen. All right. Thanks again for being here. Thanks again for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I'll catch up with you guys in the next one. Keep those cats safe. All right. Until then, bye. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.